Hi, my name is Susan Lolova. I'm a researcher and a composer. And I do my research is on kind of things related to Iranian music, basically. Oh, that's great. And uh, are you a PhD student as well? Yes, I'm a PhD student at the moment at City University of London, and I'm coming towards submission. I should be submitting probably January 2021, so very soon. Yo, congratulations, that's great. It must, must feel really good as well. And um, what exactly is your research interest and what exactly is your PhD on? So my PhD, my kind of PhD area is, is music fundamentally, but basically what I do is I use a combined methodology of composition, so writing music, but also a kind of writing called autoethnography which is um, autoethnography is a, a writing style which kind of posits like what would it be like if writing in the humanities was closer to creative writing than it was to writing in the sciences for example so what you do is you basically write kind of um, narratives about yourself and your life but with the idea that emotion and intimacy is kind of at the forefront um, it's sort of you know, is, is different to a lot of academic writing. It doesn't tend towards empiricism or objectivism at all. It's really about emotion and feeling and experience. Because the idea is that the individual is always created through the social at the same time that the social is created through the individual. Um, so I kind of combine these two methodologies as ways of thinking about Iranianness and Iranian identity, you know, in a very kind of personal way. And particularly through my, my own kind of experiences, um, as I have British Iranian ethnicity, I grew up in the UK. So this kind of experience of being in between two things, you know, not really fully one thing or the other. Um, and yeah, I use composition and autoethnography as ways of, sort of exploring those ideas. That's incredible. It sounds like a very creative way to write a PhD and even more personal. I mean, PhDs are always an extension of ourselves, but yours seems even more personal and, and that's incredible. And I suppose you've already answered this question about, you know, what led you to pursue this topic. Um, but could you maybe elaborate more and, um, and why did you decide to study in the UK? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. And I, I guess like ev like all PhDs, my PhD changed loads. Like my original plan was much more in the field of ethnomusicology, which would have involved, um, and in fact, in the first couple of years of my PhD, I was in Iran a lot doing research, and I was really interested in researching um, what they call like fusion music which is like a kind of music, well, there's lots of different kinds of fusion music, but the one I was looking at was really music that combines elements from Western classical and Iranian classical music. Um, so I was working with composers and um, studying them and their music, and it, but at the same time, I was doing my own composition just kind of on the side. Um, and then after I got a year into my PhD, it became clear that composition should really be part of my PhD like I'd always been a composer it just sort of seemed weird that I was studying other people's music and doing so much of my own music but that was kind of outside so then it became okay studying this fusion music from you know several viewpoints one of which being me living you know in the diaspora let's say and you know Iranians living in Iran but then it became a bit difficult to go to Iran um you know for obvious reasons and you know i have two passports and i for a couple i had about four or five trips planned <clears throat> over a period of a year and a half and they all i just ended up cancelling them all because i just i just wasn't certain that it was going to be okay and um so that kind of slightly well it didn't cut off the research i could have still continued doing the research on like you know over the internet but it just put up a small barrier which then made me kind of reflect on like what do I actually really want to do here and I was finding more and more that I was um, reading a lot of creative writing kind of like creative life writing like memoir and things like that and I was just really interested in that way of writing and you know I think when you when you do creative practice when you do composition or any a kind of creative practice you're already you're already kind of eschewing objectivism in a certain way. You're already kind of stepping away from this empirical idea of what research is. And it seemed weird to me that 
I was writing this music, but then I was writing in a way that was like super objective and super kind of, or like tending to objectivism and super kind of in the kind of conventional academic style. So then these kind of, all these kinds of different things happened. I couldn't go to Iran. I couldn't do this research so easily. And then, and you know, I was really interested in this way of writing. So then it all kind of moved into not being really talking about this style of music. It became talking about a kind of evocative and intimate experience of a kind of ambiguous identity from like a really personal lens. Wow. <laughs> I'm just enthralled because it's so, it, it really does break barriers of what a PhD should be. And uh, that's, that's very inspiring. And uh, I, I'm very curious to see how, how, how you, you know, how you pursue this beyond your PhD as well. Um, in terms of your composition, is it something that, um, you, you have in your PhD, do you comment on it or is it something that is quite separate? Yeah, so Sorry, the, uh, um, sense. <laughs> no, no, it does, it does. I mean, creative practice PhDs are like oh, yes. really ambiguous to people who are outside of that world. Like yeah, I really so think. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm very ignorant in this, in this regard. But I think it's worth explaining because I think a lot of people, you know, why would you, why would you get it if, you know, if it's not something that you're involved in? So yeah, the, the form my PhD takes is a portfolio of like four big compositions and a thesis and there, and together they are the PhD. Um, and the thesis, I mean, composition PhDs take many different forms. Some, in some PhDs, like in the US, you can literally just write music and there's no written element at all. That doesn't tend to happen so much in the UK. But then saying that there are some you, you know, UK PhDs where you write the compositions and then the thesis is just a commentary on the compositions. And so it's quite short. Mm -hmm. I've decided to um, kind of increase the thesis element a bit. So it's, it's a bit, it's about 60,000 words. It's like a little bit shorter than an ordinary PhD, a, a written PhD, it's but it's substantial though. Yeah, and then, the, you know, there's about an hour and 45 minutes worth of music that go with it. And the way that I have presented it is it's kind of like I have some kind of conceptual ideas I'm exploring and I explore them all through stories about my life that then get intertwined with music as well. And, and analysis of, of the music, analysis of the process of writing the music. Because it's sort of, you know, they're all just epistemologies. They're all just like ways of thinking about things. And music is a way of thinking, you know, writing music is a way of thinking about things. Because, you know, when you write music, what, you, what you're doing is you're bringing to bear, you know, 20 years of musical training, but also all of your lived experience. And it, you know, it's, it comes out in a way that is different from writing, that is it's like, can be more ambiguous. Right. But I still think that that's a really relevant and important way for just for thinking about the world. And what I like about it is that when you use composition and then when you add to this the autoethnography thing, you're going to get outcomes that are inherently different to if you used a kind of more um, sort of objective style, just because they're different ways of thinking. So you're not going to get the same answers, basically. That's super exciting and uh, very interesting. I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't complain because, you know, I'm just writing. I don't at least, you know, having that added element of composing music and having that creativity, it's, uh, that's really inspiring actually. And um, so are you a Persian classicist music? Is, is that the right term? I'm completely so, yeah, my... so sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, don't sorry, I'm so embarrassed good. because I, I listen to, you know, classical music, but Sure. No, have no idea of it. Yeah, my training is primarily in Western classical music. Like that's okay. what I, start, you know, started doing as a child and have done right. for you know twenty odd years or whatever. Um, I spent a year in the U.S. studying Iranian classical music, um, which is like a tiny amount of time. Like, and the aim wasn't to become to become versed in Iranian classical music. It was to kind of gain a kind of foot in the door to sort of start understanding it and thinking through it. And basically what my music does is it engages with ideas, concepts, you know, things from both kind of fields. Right. What's interesting is at the beginning, you know, and, and I guess like all PhDs, it's like a real journey, but what's 
interesting in mine is that I have a composition from the beginning and I have a composition from the end and they sound completely different. Wow. Um, mm. Yeah, and because at the beginning of it, I tended to kind of be a bit more... I mean, if I'm feeling uncharitable towards myself, that there's like a naivety, I think, in the in the. I don't think that's true of any PhD, though. If I read my first draft, I I, I think the same thing as like yeah. very. <laughs> what was I thinking? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a process, so, isn't it? It's a process. Yeah. yeah, and like the way that I the the kind of I was sort of like taking a very fixed idea of like this is an Iranian kind of musical concept, and I'm going to put it with this concept in this way, and it, and it, it feels a bit sort of like. It's very there's like there's like clear delineations, and it's like these are two different things, and I'm mixing them. Which, but that speaks very much to the way I was conceiving of my own self at that period of time. Mm, mm. Um, and the work at the latter end of the PhD is much more kind of ambiguous and much right. more about movement and flow and change, mm. and, and less about like drawing on explicit fields or or, or um, practices of music and then combining them. That's very interesting, and um, and I suppose the I mean I'm, I'm very curious, and I'm, I would like to know more about this. But just to uh, keep things a little bit uh, concise, um, how how easy is it to study Iranian classical music in the UK? Um, you know, Iranian classical music. Yeah. Um, you mean like logistically or logistically, like? I mean, how, what has your experience been? Is there yeah. enough resources? Or do you get enough support? Um, is there, you know, what, what has the experience been? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because actually all the study I did was in the US. I've never actually studied it in the UK. So I'm kind of like, I actually don't even know. Um, mm. I think it's quite hard to study it institutionally. Like there's no, as far as I'm like, as far as I'm aware, I don't think you can, I mean, maybe there are, and I don't know, but th th it's, you would do it with like a private person, like you would find like a private teacher. And I know loads of great people that I could study with. Mm -hmm. um, but yet in the US, so in the US, when I did it, it was quite interesting. It was with this um, great musician called Reza Vali, and he's at Carnegie Mellon in, in Pittsburgh, and he set up a center for Iranian classical music. And what's really cool about studying with him is that he, um, well, he, he's Iranian, he's born in Iran, he's been there with the US, I don't know, mm -hmm. four years, like a long time. Right. But, and his initial training was in Western classical music. Right. And then he taught himself Iranian music in his 30s, and he's probably now in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So he like really knows both traditions really, really well. Mm -hmm. And it means that you can kind of move between them in conversations. Mm -hmm. Whereas in some other contexts you know people just know one and you kind of yeah. learn one in one way whereas he, he would learn it in kind of a style that was akin to how you'd learn it in, in Iran or in the Iranian system and then he'd say okay but let's talk about this through the lens of western music and, and the frameworks that we are, that you understand better kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay that's interesting so and and that doesn't exist in the UK or? I'm not aware of anything in a university. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah, I think there are like, there are like music, I think there's like a couple of music schools, but oh. um, they cater, I think they cater slightly more towards children, although I think adults could go, but yeah, I, I don't know anything in like a university context where you can, like I think there's a lot of courses where you can, you know, you could do a course on Iranian classical music, but it's not practical. It's like the right. history. And, you know, right. Yes, okay, thing. just like, okay, yeah, yes, I see what you mean. Now, that's very interesting and very informative. So um, thank you very much, Susan, for sharing um, your experiences and uh, what you're doing with us. So uh, look forward to seeing where you, where, you, where you take your research next. Thank you so much. It's been really great to chat. Yeah.